Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the June 21st, 2023 Worcester Township Board of Supervisors business meeting. Would you please join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance? Good evening, folks. My name is Rick Delello. I'm the chairman of the board. To my left is Lou Betts, who is our vice chair. To my right is Steve Quigley, who is our third member. Over on the side table, we have in the front, Bob Brandt, who's our solicitor, and Joe Nolan, who's our township engineer. And on the back table, we have Sean Halbum, who's our township manager, and Amanda Lafty, who is our assistant township manager. Uh, first and foremost, does anybody have any informational items for the board tonight? Uh, yes, this meeting is being uh, video recorded for future broadcast. Uh, the Board of Supervisors has also held two executive sessions, the first on June 7th to discuss real estate, the second on June 21st uh, to discuss real estate litigation and personnel. No decisions were made. Uh, and just for the record, the June 7th meeting took place from 3 p.m. to approximately 4.15 p.m. The June 21st uh, executive session went from approximately 6 p.m. or 6.30 p.m. until 6.55 p.m. Thank you, Sean. First item on our agenda is public comment. We do ask that you limit your public comment to five minutes. Does anybody have any public comment for the board this evening? Okay. Seeing none, we will move forward. Under official action items, first item up is the consent agenda. First and foremost, does any board member wish to remove any items for our consent agenda tonight? I do not. Sir. Okay. Then would somebody like to make a motion for that? We'll make a motion. We approve the consent agenda. Treasurer's report, monthly reports from May 23, and the bill payment from May 23, and May 23 work session and business meeting minutes. And I'll second that. Okay, and I'll simply add that the amount of the bills, Lou, is 328698 Okay, folks, it's been moved and seconded. Is there any public comment regarding the motion that's on the floor? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Next up, we have Resolution 2023-14. That's going to be a resolution to adopt the Montgomery County 2022 hazardous Mitigation plan update. Sean? Uh, yes. So the hazard mitigation plan is routinely updated uh, by the County um, Department of Emergency Services and Planning Commission. Uh, they update this uh, countywide plan every three years. By adopting it, the board allows the township to take advantage of certain PEMA and FEMA grant money in the event of an emergency disaster declaration. Thank you, Sean. And I believe you said there were copies of that information. Uh, that. Yes, there's a printed copy in the back of the meeting room. There's also a uh, online version on the Montgomery County PA website. And is there anything relative to the mitigation plan that we should review or discuss? Is there anything unique to that that's worth discussing? Uh, not at this time. The, uh, the county did um, work with residents or um, Stakeholders, I'll say, in Worcester Township, um, you know, as a part of the countywide assessment. Um, so we have had, you know, emergency service professionals through our fire department and emergency uh, planning, um, you know, weigh in on that uh, document. Thank you, Sean. Does any board member have any questions on this particular topic? Just one. Is, does this change year to year? Is this an every five-year plan? or does uh, Every three years it's updated. Um, so there's um, not necessarily broad changes. Um, often they are uh, specific to uh, specific areas. Um, I'd have to take a closer look to see if there were any like um, particular areas that were stressed. But as far as I know, this is just um, you know, pretty routine updates. So maybe ask a question from another way, Sean, if we chose not to adopt this, like how does, how do we sort of play nicely with all the other townships in the sandbox on something like this? Well, if we, if the board elected not to um, pass this resolution, we would still 
work with other emergency service providers, we would just not be eligible for any sort of uh, grant reimbursement for um, disasters related to flooding, storms, think back to uh, Hurricane Irene and the like, or those tornadoes, yep. um, which typically will have some sort of state uh, level uh, disaster declaration. Gotcha. So there's certainly some value in us doing it beyond simply the mechanics of every three years saying yes to it. Is there any grant Absolutely. money involved in this plan too that we're accepting or doing, or is this just more of a... No, we're not specifically doing that, but I think what Sean is, is saying is if you take a hurricane scenario later this summer and we've decided not to right. play nice here, then we don't have opportunity for grant. No benefit it. money. Right. No benefit money in a scenario like that. I, I think it's a good thing, so... Steve, any questions? You want to make a motion, Lou? Make a motion, Resolution 2023-14, to, to adopt the Montgomery County 2022 Hazard Mitigation Plan update. I'll second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Is there any public comment regarding the motion that's on the floor? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Next up, Bob, is a big night for you. We got... So we... <laughs> <coughs> So folks, next we're gonna, I'm gonna hand it over to Bob in just one minute, but it's gonna be a motion to enter into a settlement for tax assessment appeals. And if you've been to past meetings. Yeah, we have C. Nope. It says right here, deed of dedication. Temporary construction easements. This is tonight's, right? No, it's not. That was printed out from the website. Enforcing like seven dollars. No Maybe got updated. Okay. Bear with me, folks. Previous update. Not on his agenda. Newsflash. Okay, I'm back in the right place. I had an old copy in front of me. So, for Bob, hold that thought. <laughs> but you got another one here too. So it's going to be a motion to authorize execution by the township. Uh, of the Valley Forge Corridor uh, deed and dedication and temporary construction easement signed by James D. Bonacero and Oldana K. Bonacero. So we've been, folks, if you're aware, there's been, uh, there's a project that's going along 363 and there are various dedications for small slices of land that we've been um, acquiring as part of that project. So Bob, I will now hand that one over to you. Said Township Line or Valley Forge? What? Pro which which property? The address you said. Tw Township Line. That's what I thought. All right. All right. Need a motion for this one. We need a motion for this. Lou, do you want to articulate it, or Bob, you want to add in whatever we need? So I'll reread that and I'll make a motion to authorize the execution of the Township of Valley Forge Road Corridor deeds and dedication, temporary construction easements signed by the James D. Bonacera and Orlando K. Bonacera. I'll second that motion. Okay. So it's been moved and seconded. Is there any public comment regarding the motion that's on the floor? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. So now we're up to a motion to enter into settlement for tax assessment appeals, Bob, and you did a nice little job here to bundle these all together. So why don't you take it away?
Right, and by my math in my head, that was around thirty-two dollars. So nice work there, Bob. That's a, that is that's a, that's a couple of pizza. Well, it's at least one pizza as opposed to a cup of coffee, is which we typically get. So uh, let's no. stop talking about it. It's costing us more money. <laughs> so we'll make a motion that to enter into the. Settlement tax assessment appeals for the following addresses that Mr. Brandt had stated. Do we need any more than that, or do we accept that? Is that adequate, Bob? That, okay. I'll second that motion. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Is there any public comment regarding the motion that's on the floor? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. So next up, we have recognition of service and as I think some are aware tonight is Joe Nolan's last meeting with us so as I often like to do I'm going to say a few words and then I'm going to allow my board members fellow board members if they want to add anything on top of that and and I'll do my best to uh to keep it reasonable and brief, you know, that's sometimes hard for me, but I'll, I'll sort of move it along. So um, first and foremost, I want to start with a thank you to Joe for his time, for his service to our community, to, we talk about Worcester being a special place, and we often talk about why we live here, and uh, more than a couple of years ago, Joe came to this community and you know, we wanna say, you know, we have a lot of gratitude that when you came here, you adopted what Worcester was and in the fulfillment of your duties for the last 39 years and change, you've helped us live that, you know, ultimately. So you've taken um, what was our community and made it your community and now many years later, you know, we're, we're at the end of this piece of the journey, if you will. So uh, we did ask for some information about you so that I could share. And it's you, I'll do my best again. And, and the information, and I'll apologize in advance if I don't have it all 100% right. But uh, professionally, I thought I would break it down and sort of do a little professional, a little personal, and then maybe a little human. So. On the professional side, Joe's journey started back in the mid-70s when he graduated from Villanova. Now, I didn't know he graduated from Villanova. I'm a Providence College graduate, so I always knew there was a kindred thing with Joe and I. We went to small Catholic institutions that used to be affordable. Um, we didn't win any national championships. You did it at Villanova. But you jumped right into sort of an engineering career, spent several years, and I want to get the name right, it was at Gannett Fleming Environmental Engineers is what I was told. And after a handful of years there, you found your way to CKS. Sometime in the early 80s, I have 84. Does that sound about right? About right. Okay. So, and then you became synonymous with CKS over the course of the ensuing decades. And when you think about Worcester, we were one of the early clients, if I understand correctly, and it was somewhere between 85 and 87. I've heard a couple of different dates, but certainly the mid-80s, we'll mid -80s, call it that. Mid-80s, correct. And to roll back the clock, Steve will remember this, we were largely a farming community at that time. And the population in 1990 was approximately 3,500 people. Well, with the census of 2020, we went north of 10,000. So in the generation that you served us, you took us from farming to suburban. You took us through a path that I can't even imagine. We've tried to think about some of the projects and some of the jobs and some of the things, and it, it would be easier to sort of 
decide what engineering we didn't do you know, <laughs> across that period of time with land development, unfunded mandates, stormwater management, sewer. I mean, the list is extensive, largely. But, you know, for me, the mental picture was a farming community in, in the late 80s and early 90s. And even though we're still greener than most anywhere, you know, we're now 10,000 plus people and we're suburban. You know, whether we like it or not, that's, that's the world we now live in and we're a suburban community and you took us through that journey. And, and professionally, you helped bring us forward to all the things we maybe didn't want to do or didn't prefer not to do, I mean, and, and ultimately had to do that. So that was sort of the professional journey that we had. Um, I think a lot of people, you know, when you stop and think about it, you, it's a long time. You know, 39 years and change, 40 years, it, it's in essence, your entire adult life, you know, you spent with us. Uh, shifting gears to the personal side of it. Well, first I wanna thank your wife for sharing you with us for the last <laughs> zillion years and change. Um, it, you know, there's, you, you often hear, we talk about all the hard stuff that we do engineering and all that stuff, and in our meetings, you have an opportunity to share, but you know, we don't know, we don't stop and realize you know, your husband, your father, you have three kids, you know, three grown kids now. And rumor has it, you're a grandparent. Now, I heard, is it two? Two. A boy and a girl, right? Boy and a girl. Okay. So, you've started checking boxes that we didn't even know existed for you. You've been living a life, you know, a parallel life with us. But, you know, ultimately, there's a whole personal element there that, you know, that's nice to learn about. You know, that there's family and that there's grandkids and that, you know, that you're now doing all the things you should be doing as a grandparent, hopefully. Yes. You hear that you like the sports, that the kids like the sports, that's always good stuff. So that was to me, uh, and I, I have the kids' names and I'll apologize if they are wrong, um, but it, it's Aaron, Andrew, and Alex? Alex, Alexandra, or Alexandra, Alex. Gotcha. One California, one in Portland, and that's the Oregon Portland, not the main Portland. Right. And then one local in Westchester, or is that Westchester? Correct. Excellent. And the grandkids are in Westchester. When, and that's good. That is excellent. So, Joe the engineer is Joe the person. And then I want to take just one minute to talk about Joe the human. So, one of the other things I learned when they shared some background with Joe is that you serve on the board of Lenape Valley Foundation, which I, in all fairness, had never heard of. So I looked it up. And apparently for the last 60 years, they've been helping a lot of people and you serve on their board. So there's, you have a professional life, you've got a personal life, and then you've got a human piece where you're helping people in a way that I think is great when you serve on boards like that, when you have an opportunity through professional relationships and personal relationships to serve on those. So that was a little human element to that. And then the biggest question we all wanted to know is what's Joe now gonna do in retirement? Well, I heard a couple things. <laughs> I heard a couple things. And, and you can either deny or you can confirm these little nuggets that we heard. So one that I hope is true is that it'll be time with the grandkids. Rumor has it, the success of your professional career has allowed you the opportunity, you might travel a little. There might be, we might get out of the state. You might get to Florida, <laughs> perhaps to Maryland, and any other destinations that you may deem appropriate. So um, he's all yours in that regard to wherever you want to take him. And then there is, there is a whisper that you might, maybe, possibly, if there's some easy engineering work to do, you might sort of tinker. Would that be the, the correct? Uh, yes, I'm going to stay involved to a certain degree and uh, continue with uh, my learning, as well as trying to help uh, my fellow engineers on, on CKS Arrow uh, when they need to be helped. That's good to hear. <clears throat> we, you've earned it. We have a plaque for you. It's, it's not a gold watch, but certainly we'd love to get up and get a picture of you with this. I'd, I'd like to hand it over to either Steve or Lou if you want to add in any 
Final comments, any thoughts? Mr. Vice Chair. 35 years of doing anything, especially in this township, is difficult. <laughs> How many supervisors? <laughs> You've been through what, 30 supervisors telling you what to do, how to do it, different township managers, good old Chuck Sardo. Uh, I guess you've earned it. 35 years of doing anything, and 40 years of doing anything is pretty difficult. So good luck in your retirement. Thank you, Lou. I appreciate it. Well, I've been sitting here for 16 years working with Joe. It doesn't seem that, that long ago, but I've been coming to meetings and being on the other side of the table uh, dealing with Joe with my business as well. So that goes back probably as long as he's been here. And um, Joe's history with my family goes back a little further that he had worked with Dick Erweiler uh, way back when, when Dick was in Hatboro and some of these other townships that won his young engineering career. But Joe's always been a true professional, and I think even though I disagree with him sometimes, we could come to a meeting in the minds, and I think that's the most important thing, that you have to be able to, to talk to people, to deal with people. And they're human, as I think Rick said, you know, they're the engineer, but they're also a father, a husband, and they have a life as well. And we have to take that into consideration. I think the human aspect when dealing with people, I, I said they're, they're not tyrants, uh, they read the law, they interpret the law, and we just have to go along with that sometimes. We can question it, and we can have friendly disagreements, but you have, at the end of the day, uh, agree to disagree sometimes. And I don't think I've had that a lot with Joe, but um, I, I thank you, Joe, on behalf of the people of Worcester for the years of work you've done here and the inspiration and the guidance and uh, the way you educated, I guess. You know, some people can just uh, bulldoze you down with their comments, but I think Joe has always been a educator for us, a professor where he... You know, uh, he lets us make them, he'll tell us what the story is and let us make the mistakes, but he guides us, and therefore we're not caught in some of these traps. So, Joe, once again, thank you, good luck, and uh, spend time with the family because before you know it, boom. And uh, I should do the same thing, but 10 grandkids, uh, I come here to get away from them. <laughs> thank you, that Joe. That sounds good. So, listen, Joe, we're going to have you come up if you don't mind and take a couple pictures. We'll do that right out in front. Thank you very much. I, I truly appreciate it. Uh, I did, have been doing a lot of thinking about this day. And uh, one thing I can say is the first public meeting that I attended as a township engineer was at Worcester. The board at the time was George Lewis, John Graham, and Jack Kelly. George also served as the township manager. Um, Back then, you're right. I mean, the township offices were up the steps above the firehouse. 
unair conditioning, flies everywhere. Um, it was, I walked into it and I said, what did I get myself into? <laughs> the first meeting was seven minutes. And I said, this is going to be a breeze. <laughs> but so many years later, a lot of things have changed, but a lot happened. Uh, the board is still three members. The goal of the township is still preservation as much as possible. You're right, there has been a lot of development in the township, but the township was able to control how that development occurred, where it occurred, and what type of development um, was uh, beneficial to the township. So um, my goal in helping the township achieve their goals by helping with the development process, uh, the stormwater management, all the new rules and regulations that come, come down the pike that we have to deal with even though they're unfunded. Um, it's a challenge, it is a challenge, but um, you have seen me as the person from CKS and I am CKS in your mind, but I also had 45 staff behind me that you did not see who did all the things that I'm now taking credit for. Um, John is a perfect example. John has designed probably a dozen projects in Worcester, but you never knew that. Um, so I did have a great support staff, and they are part of the reason that I was able to be successful over these years. And the other thing you said at the previous meeting is, you know, this position is not guaranteed every year. Every year I have to be reappointed. So every year my goal was to do what needed to be done and then a little bit more to satisfy the township, to have the confidence in me and CKS engineers to appoint me the next year. And it's been successful so far. Uh, I thank the township. I've enjoyed my time with the staff from George Lewis to Sean, um, all the support staff. The township has always been very kind to me. I've always had a good rapport with the staff um, the residents of the township, um, I've dealt with a lot of them over the years. Some was pleasant, some was not pleasant, but I think from my standpoint, um, it always worked out with an agreement and an understanding, and there were never any hard feelings. Um, my job is to protect the township, represent the township, and uh, also serve the residents of the township. I know that's a big part of my job. So. Thank you, thank you for all of your support and confidence in me over the years. Um, I do have plans and you hit on most of them, um, but I'm not ready to shut the door yet. I'll be here, I even told Sean and John if they need me for anything, just give me a call, I'll be available. Um, and again, thank you and uh, I'll miss it, I really will. Thank you, John. This meeting is a little bit more than seven minutes, though. <laughs> yeah. If you can keep me under an hour, that's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> slightly anticlimactic, but we move forward. Um, first and foremost, is there any other business that any board member wishes to bring forward tonight? Yes, Rick. Uh, there's three things on my mind. One is the fire department did, I, I believe the fire trucks either in route or on site, this new ladder truck. Um, I believe you had a meeting earlier. Uh, was there any progress on, if you could enlighten us on? Uh, sure, so the, the fire truck is in Hatfield this week uh, and they're doing, uh, they're putting pieces on it. I mean, ultimately they're loading things, Sean, is that how it's described? It goes to Hatfield where the things get put on and it's close, less than two weeks. That's I think my they understanding were is it has to be outfitted, and I believe it still needs to be uh, like logoed. Uh, I don't know if it's already been um, Worcestered. Yeah, gotcha. but it is in the state, and it's so it's here, but it's not officially here yet. I guess is how we would describe it. So, is the funding process in the works? Are they uh, content, or how does the meeting go? So. Um, 
on that piece of equipment, the funding was already handled. It's been approved. That was already taken care of. All right. That's what I wanted to know. Second one, um, again, this is a pet peeve of mine with the school and the parking on Anvil Drive. There's 43 cars. I've shared the video with the board members, uh, Sean and Bob. Um, I, I think we need to address it. It's, it's the safety of the children. They're parking on, we got them off of Germantown Pike, and we spent, I think, $10,000 in lining Germantown Pike and uh, getting off Germantown Pike, but now they're all on Anvil Drive. I think it's an impact to that community, and I don't believe the school has any interest in helping the community with their issue. Um, so I'm asking, and I guess I'm, I can't make a motion tonight, but I believe that we need to move forward on letting the kids park in front of the school on the grass side from entrance to entrance from the front of building down to the other drop-off area that would relieve I think the 40 some cars and uh, remove that parking no parking ordinance sign um, I don't know what support I can get from either member but I'd like that we'd like to help the school I don't believe it's safe for the kids to walk from Anvil Drive up Germantown Pike or through the yards of the residents to get to school. It's something we have to address. It's not going away. And I don't believe the school is doing anything. Uh, the superintendent is not, in my opinion, he's not acting in a professional manner. But the other uh, item, and if any member wants to commit, you, know, you want to make a comment on either one of those before I go forward, or is that good enough? I think you articulated it pretty well, Lou. Do you want to add anything on top of that, Steve? I mean, it sounds like, I mean, it sounds like we just need to take a look and see if there's more we can do. You know, from our side, it sounds like there's some steps you feel like we oh, can take. There, there and, is. I want to add yeah. one thing for Steve Johnson. Sure. On, it was June 6th, obviously D-Day, and I took a ride. I rode test cars for a living, and I made a ride on Anvil Drive, and I had to stop about 50 feet into it because there's a big propane truck, about a 30,000-pound propane truck looking at me, and we couldn't move. We were dead ended because. All the cars were parked on the other side. So I had to move over into somebody's, try not to infringe on their yard uh, and let the truck go by. I think it was on a curve and I, it, it, it's not a safe issue. It could have an accident and this wouldn't be a good thing. So I believe it, it needs help. I mean, um, we gotta do something. We just can't ignore it. The, the residents do, they have an attorney and, and they're playing these ping pong money games with the attorneys. And I think we, need, we, we deserve the residents need to have, uh, or help, how's that? Okay. Mr. Betts, I have to agree with you. I, I personally think the school district's moving rather slowly on the parking situation. It is becoming a problem for the neighbors. I wouldn't want the high school kids walking through my front yard and my backyard in those private neighborhoods over there, in any neighborhood. So I think the school district needs to be nudged to start moving in that direction to do something. Uh, the church, Mr. Ryan started the conversations with Dr. Zerby maybe a year ago, and it just seems to be dragging on. And I think they're just, in my opinion, they're just kicking the can down the road. And I think the township needs to step up and say, okay, enough's enough. You have to take some kind of action for the health and safety of the students. So and I'd like I, to I think you do something. Be in the minutes that I did speak with Dr. Zerb or the, the superintendent that morning and to show him the video of the 43 cars parked in Anvil. He did admit, because I was at a school board meeting, when he did utilize that church property for his own benefit for the school bus drivers. So he did use that. And then a, an a parent, and it was somebody I know, she was on the football team at the football parent club, she, the mom took it to her own and created the 50 spots and made it work. And then apparently, the superintendent had a fallout with this person and called the township, and then we this whole ordinance came up, section 150 dash whatever. So then they sent, and then the manager at the time sent, you know, five hundred dollar a day fines to the church for doing nothing wrong. So it was good for the superintendent when it was for his benefit, but yet when the residents took that same lead and did something, and it alleviated the school parking problem. Then it wasn't good, and since then, and that's been over three years since that happened. I think it's maybe four years. It was before COVID, and now it's, it's, it's an ongoing issue, and nothing's resolved. The church is willing to cooperate. School is not, but again, and he admitted to me, 
and I'll testify to it. He admitted he used it for his own benefit for the school bus driver. So, uh, you know, I don't know what his, if he set a precedent, I don't know, it's, is it, it's good for him, but not for anybody else. I don't know where his feelings are, but we need to do something. I'm sorry, but I think we need to uh, remove the parking from in front of the school, alleviate the parking, let the kids walk from the side of the road to the school versus a quarter mile from Anvil Drive up Germantown Pike. It's a safety issue, in my opinion. So that's, I'll let that go with that. The only other thing I'll add is uh, this community hall here, I'm waiting, I think we're waiting on a survey and I think we need to make some improvements here. Um, and, and it's called the uh, community hall and I think it's, it's Farmers Union Community Hall. I spoke with Bill several times and I think that uh, he made a, an acknowledgement that we'd like to rename it Farmers Union Hall and keep the legacy alive in Worcester. Anybody wants to make a comment or if Bill wants to say something, that's fine. He can share in public comment. He can certainly add some comments there, Bill. That's no problem. Do you want to add anything to that, Steve? Or? No, I think Lou sums up the parking okay. Problem, so about that. I'm done. Okay. Thank you, Lou. So next up is public comment. Uh, we do ask Les at the beginning, if you can keep it to five minutes, we appreciate that. Uh, does anybody have any public comment for the board? Bill? Is the green light on there? You just might have to pull it a little closer, make sure we get you on the video there. Uh, I don't think it is. Can you, it, there's a little, can you see push? Oh, there's a, it's there really you go. on now. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay, uh, well, I wanted to give a, a thank you to the township, as, as we always do, for the great help we received in holding the 83rd Annual Farmers Union Horse Company horse show, not a parade yet, but we're working on it. Weather was obviously the key and it was great again this year. So we had uh, 55 riders come out with 50 horses and had a great day. We were there from eight till five and um, a lot of spectators came through during the course of the day and saw some, some of the heritage of the township, which was nice. Uh, didn't quite get the participation this year from Worcester residents that We've had, but we did have a few winners come out of the township stables, which was Great. always a good thing to home team stuff. So we we're happy with that. Um, the Farmers Union Hall for this might be a little confusing with the Historic Society, so I'm gonna not ask for that for the hall here, but I would ask that uh, we consider the park being renamed for the Farmers Union Park in the future. Um, we're working on um, helping with a multi-use uh, design that we could share that maybe can get more participation and more usage for the whole community as, we're, as we unfortunately grow. <laughs> um, don't think it's terrible to grow, but it's uh, inevitable that we'll grow. So we um, want to thank the township, want to thank the fire department, thank the staff. Everybody did a great job again. And it was a really good time. Thank you, Bill. Very much appreciate that. How many horses or entries are from Worcester? We had only five this year come out from the township. There was a big horse show in Bloomsburg where a lot of the stables, we have four major commercial stables in the township, and most of those people went to Bloomsburg for the big show. They paid, they paid money. We just paid ribbons. Gotcha. So overall, how many horses would you say are in Worcester that people ride? That usually we're we're working on updating our pursuit committee um, 
list for the township so that you can have a, a there's 40 properties and right now we're guesstimating that there's about 300 horses recreational horses in the township we're going to hope to have a harder number than that by the end of the summer for you um, is that growing or is it stable depends on what happens with our farm on pot shop yeah do you have any update on what's happening with that or it's a whisper down the lane never mind i'm gonna talk out of school about how many horses are boarded there they have they have space for 150 150 horses. 100. They don't have that because the one of the renters or leasees there moved down Pot Shop to uh, Center Point Farm uh -huh. and took a lot of clientele. So I think while it's for sale, there's not been a push to fill every nook and cranny. Right. Um, but there are other facilities, Gwen Meadow and Camara around that are available. We're hoping that. It'll stay that way. It's very green, very pre pleasant. And, and even that 40-acre property we bought maybe in the future could be. Oh, we're, we're working on that. Working too. on yeah, that. Absolutely. That's good. The 40 acres property we bought on Fisher Road, 40-plus acres. I don't know the actual term. but We're, we're going to put together the plan, a, some kind of a plan and a presentation about some usage that would be our, cooperative. our kind of historical um, heritage stuff. Mm -hmm. Very good. The township. Okay. All positive. It's okay. all good. Thank you, Bill. I'm Thank you. you. Does anybody else have any public comment for the board tonight? Yes, sir. Okay. Nope. Then motion to adjourn. Thank you all for coming.